assalamu alaikum dear students how are you fine that's good now uh, you go to page 147 of your book i mean uh, class 10th subject is english and uh, your topic is uh, a short story uh, called dusk uh, by saki whose you know actual name was hector hug munro he was born on december 18 1870 and he died on november 13 1916 uh, so you uh, keep your books open i uh, will go refer to text here and there and then uh, we'll have a discussion on the story and we'll find out what we have in the story uh, now before we go to the story i will tell you something about you know a short story what is a short story you know short a story which is short is a short story it is you know uh, shorter than a novella and uh, novella is you know shorter than a novel novel we have a long story and we have a novella in between short story and a novel and short story is a story which you finish in one go and uh, basically story is meant to be heard you know you can you can hear to a story but you must have a habit of reading short stories you must make it a habit of reading short stories now there are certain elements of a short story for example we have setting now setting is uh, the it is it refers to the place uh place where the story is taking place it can be a forest it can be city it can be village it can be a road it can be hospital it can be office it can be anywhere and then time time refers to for example it can be any season it can be morning evening it can be night it can be dead of the night it can be day it can be any you know january february march any month and also you are being introduced to the main characters in in the first two three paragraphs who are who are the main characters in the in the in the story and also you have got in short story what is what we call as atmosphere you come to know about what sort of atmosphere is there for example it will be rainy it will be snowy it will, the storm will be there it will be you know even there will be darkness there will be light so this is an atmosphere that that adds to the you know setting of a story where the story is taking place and then next you have in a short story you have plot now what is the difference between plot maybe some of you will say that plot is a story okay but there is a difference between story and plot you know story a kahani but plot you know is inside a story it is a story with twists unless there is plot in a story we can't can't call it a story so you in 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 plot you have you know ups and downs that those those bottlenecks that conflict is there that's crucial to plot conflict there should be a problem there should be some you know some bottleneck there should be some obstacle and then there are different elements of a plot for example we have exposition is there and then we have you know rising action and then then there is a climax and there is falling action and then there is denouement there is the ending and then this theme you see the writer has to tell something to us he has to convey some message he has to give some some idea basically theme is you know that story will teach you some life skill you'll come to know about truthfulness honesty encouragement sacrifice grit many things uh, you you uh, about affection love and then there are many characters there can be character or characters even you can have an animal character also a or a bird we find them in fables so you you have these this this thing in story what you do is that when you read a story then you try to locate you try to find out these things in a story now you can read the story uh, on your own you must i i said earlier you must make a habit of reading stories so you can read it just in one two pages and three pages the story is uh, you can read it um, silently here i will tell you the story in brief uh, before that uh, let us know something about saki i was telling you that uh, he was educated at bedford grammar school in england and he considered a, 
he is considered as a master of the short story and is often compared to o henry and dorothy parker who are the you know well known uh, writers of story writers of america he ta his tales feature delicately drawn characters and finely judged narratives narrative also means story novel story uh, uh, this uh, short story the open window may be the most famous with a closing line usme ek line se likhi hai last mein romance at, at short notice was her specialty and that has entered the lexicon there is list of words in the dictionary so then in 1893 he followed in his father's footsteps by joining the indian imperial police where he was posted at to burma as was another uh, as asobic and uh, a pseudonymous writer like george orwell two years later uh, failing health forced his resignation and returned to england where he started his career as a journalist writing for newspapers such as westminster gazette daily express bystander morning post and out uh, look so you have this you can read it in the story there is a there is a character called norman gotsby he is the protagonist norman gotsby so he goes to a park in the evening at 30 around 30 minutes past six in march dusk you know dusk opposite of dawn sunset so it is evening time and then he uh, sees their people uh, he calls it actually there we can call it he said that this was the hour of the defeated hour of the defeated so he he calls it hour of the defeated so he goes to the to the park and there he meets different people men and women who had fought and lost and uh, who hid their fallen fortunes and dead hopes as far as possible from the scrutiny of the curious came forth in this hour of glooming when their shabby clothes and and bowed shoulders and unhappy eyes might pass unnoticed or at any rate unrecognized then he sits there on the bench on a bench there and meanwhile the one more elderly person gentleman is sitting there but he says that he had almost lost interest in life that that the gentleman that old gentleman he looked defeated but refused to admit it his clothes could scarcely be called shabby shabby you know dirty and he belonged unmistakably to that forlorn orchestra the wo musical composition to whose piping no one dances you know he was not you know attracted to sort of he was uh, uh, somewhat you know uh, uh, defeated as he rose and vanished slowly in the shadows yani wo wahan se utha aur wahan se chala gaya and his place on the bench was taken almost immediately by a young man fairly well dressed yani he was opposed to that person but more cheerful of mien than his predecessor abhi jo gentleman gaya tha na wo old ye thoda sa well look good looking aur wo kya naam hai iska bada young wagaira baith gaya wahan par meanwhile he started talking to gods be usne usko kaha ki i have come to this uh, main naya hi aaya hu yahan par apne is shehar mein to main ek hotel uh, patagonian hotel mein thara hu to lekin achanak main wahan se nikla mujhe kuch kaam tha bahar kuch lena tha lekin main wo card wahan par bhool gaya i forgot the card there in the of the name of the hotel there jisme dikha tha kahan hai wo now i am uh, you know helpless where to go I don't, and i don't have money whatever i money i had maine isko ek i bought a soap because i don't use uh, hotel soap there and to main lai wo so meanwhile he he talks to godsby and he tells he tells him ki aapko lag raha hoga ki i suppose you think i have spun you rather than impossible yarn yani main aapko chhora sa phasane ki koshish kar raha hu aisa nahi hai to godsby ne usko kaha ha it happened it happened with it happened with me also once uh, although i was with one of my friends but luckily jahan hum thare the there there is a, a canal our hotel was near a canal to hum humko wo canal ka naam yaad raha tha to finally we we managed to read the hotel so meanwhile he tells this uh, young uh, man that uh, the only you know uh, flaw in your story is that uh, you, you don't have that soap where is that soap you have and that uh, that young man starts fumbling here and there wo doon na hai but soap is not there to so, god's be is okay he says he doesn't have that what, what shall i do now main kya karunga isko meanwhile wo that that gentleman that young man stands up and he goes away and this is dusk thoda sa ye evening ka time hai 
तो वो चला गया तो ये इसको अचानक गॉड्स भी ने वहां पर देखा कि देर इज सम पैकेट इज देयर कोई लिफाफा जैसा एंड ही पिक इट अप तो देयर वाज अ केक ऑफ सोप ही सेड ओह हे देयर वाज सेड इज द ट्रूथ मुझसे ही गलती होगी मतलब मैंने उसको आई आई डिडंट यू नो बिलीव हिम आई डिडंट ट्रस्ट हिम सो वो क्या गया वो उसको ढूंढने के लिए गया तो फाइनली वो तकरीबन तकरीबन ही वाज अबाउट टू गो आउट ऑफ द पार्क So when he caught his sight of me, and he said, "Pull out! You, you are telling the truth. Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, off ye, pass on the money." He gave him the money, and he said, "Please, said god's be to himself i don't wonder either the relief from his quandary quandary uh, a difficult situation a particular dilemma uh, must have been acute it's a lesson to me not to be too clever in judging by circumstances because i have judged him by circumstances i should not have done that but what happens when he comes back to sit there on the bench again as godsby retraced his steps past the seat where he the little drama had taken place he saw an elderly gentleman poking and peering at on all sides he just scrolls ko dekha dekha aise karte hue dekha and recognized his earlier fellow occupant se kaha ha ye to pehle aaya tha wo that old man have you lost anything sir he asked yes sir a cup soap yani ye cake cup soap usi ki thi is ye jo pehle aaya tha wahan par wo old man now if you if you look at the author we have already discussed it something now if we look at the story in this story saki satirizes satirizes the character he said you know satire is a it's actually uh, we can call it literary device satire so in satire what a writer does so he actually exposes the folly of a person mistakes weaknesses shortcomings but he makes use of humor in order to improve so in this story saki satirizes the character of godsby he is the man character here who feels himself better than the others who come to sit in the park at twilight when it is you know evening time between evening and when it is uh, darkness so we we call it dusk and evening actually we call it twilight time between dusk and when it is actual darkness The story ends up with an ironic ending, humanizing the character of Godsby. So the writer has used two elements of comedy here. Comedy, you know, is supposed of tragedy. This story, you know, sometimes it will make you laugh, but sometimes it will make you feel. So that's why we have here, you know, humor and pathos. So we have here humor. Uh, humor is fun. It is something ridiculous which makes you laugh, funny, uh, which you enjoy. and then you have pathos pathos means you have uh, sadness you have sorrow something like the writer has actually juxtaposed these things here in the story he has actually put them together and sometimes he is talking about humor and sometimes he is in coming in between pathos is there so he is interwoving this so you you have this a comedy and there is comic irony now what is irony actually irony is you know it is a uh, appearances versus reality appearances versus reality haathi ke daant khane ke aur dikhane ke aur all that glitters is not gold what is is not if you look at the irony in this story when godsby meets that young man he tells him the story and godsby doesn't believe it okay and then when that person leaves and he finds a packet there he begins to believe he says no he was he was, he was speaking the truth but we as readers what is comic irony comic irony is when the reader is know that character doesn't know so but we know it that he is he is he is not right so ye ye jab ye wapas aata usko when he goes back to give him the the, the this uh, gives him the money and gives him the cake of this bar of cake the soap this bar of soap a cake of soap he gives him back so he is actually not giving it to the right person 
So this is this is irony. So when he comes back, he comes to know that this actually this uh, uh, cake of iron actually belonged to that that old man. So again, we have this what is called as we have irony here. So irony is when there is you know what is is not what we think, but that's not actually. So you, this uh, the writer uses two elements here. So comic uh, irony means when a reader knows. I, I told you that the character does not know. The example in the story, I told you that the man who tells us in the story and then finally he doesn't understand whether he's telling a lie or not, but finally he comes to know that he is uh, telling a lie. He was telling a lie. Satire means to use comedy to expose human follies. I told you human weaknesses. This is perfectly seen when Godsby is deceived by his miscalculations as he discovers that he has allowed the young man to outwit and con him. So if you go for explanation of this story, so you will come to know about that there are in the beginning you will you will come to know that um, it's are the defeated in the beginning setting man. Then you will come here when you when when he meets that uh, when that gentleman leaves that old gentleman and he meets that young man here he will tell his story. You will come to know about that. Jab padenge, read it. And here uh, in the end you will you have a lot of words explained here in glossary. What's actually glossary? Glossary is when you are being uh, the words are being explained to you in a particular context here what does this word here mean otherwise in another uh, place it can mean something different and then then God's be find is the cake of soap then goes it gives it back then he says don't judge by circumstances so that old man tells him about his that he it was his so this is the story how we'll read it first then here then here then here and then you'll go here now, if you go to the character of Godsby, so Godsby is the man character. We call it in English, in, in literature, we call him protagonist. There is a word for him, protagonist. So, protagonist is the central character of a story, of a novel, or of a drama, of a movie. It can be sometimes a lady also. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it can be sometimes an animal also. So, it's a central character. And here, Godsby is the protagonist is the central character here he is well dressed he looks like an upper class english gentleman this is when you read you, you get a you get a picture in your mind you know uh, you see when we are uh, discussing character we have to describe it through pairs p a i r s physical appearance then his actions his intentions his relationship with other characters his speech through his speech you will come to know about what sort of person he is and then he is confident about his intelligence, judgments, and urbanity and experience. He is somewhat cynical, you know cynical, one who doubts, pleasure in observing and labeling people. Yeah, this is like this because he is observing them in the park, he is looking at them and is making a judgment in his mind. And he is uh, somewhat skeptical also. And then he is cornered by miscalculations and he is also befooled, you know, in the end. So you, when you when you read the story, you will form you know uh, the, an image of Godsby in your mind. That is his character. So what sort of person he is? What does he think? How he is? How he miscalculates things and how he is deceived? Or irony? Irony? I say, when he is irony, he he sees things different. So we can say that there is irony in this story. I told you. So irony, Godsby you know is asked how to show him uh, that 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 gentleman uh, tells him the story of the soap and that godsby tells him show me the soap but he doesn't have but later on he finds the soap and see, says that it is his and gives it back to him even gives him money but when he comes back and uh, sees the situation ironical situation there the old man is looking for his um, this cake this uh, sorry cake of soap and uh, everything is dawned upon him that basically that 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 uh, gentleman was not speaking the truth so far as theme is concerned in this story so there is a theme that uh, sometimes we can be deceived deception is there you see human nature uh, it's very difficult to understand human nature because we say human nature is complex pessimism is there perception is there and uncertainty is there you are not um, you don't know how things are happening and what's going to happen the main theme of the story can be the importance and inevitability of fate 
something was uh, you know written in that person's fate and uh, gods be you know couldn't help it he gave the money to a person he, he didn't uh, he can't give him back now because he has he has he has left and then there is one more theme can be that trusting is hard uh, knowing how to trust even is harder so the, this it, it, it can be explained to you people or you can you can yourself see it through the you know story of the young man if you if you read here again i told you that you go to page number 148 and here from page number 148 you don't see him in a very good temper said godsby judging that he was expected to take due notes of the demonstration the young man turned to him with a look of disarming frankness uh, which put him instantly on his guard and he became alert because he started talking to him you wouldn't be in a good temper if we were in a fix and in he said i have done the silliest thing i have ever done in my life yes said godsby dispassionately Kya hua? came up this afternoon meaning to stay at the pentagonian hotel hotel in berkshire square continued the young man when i got there i found it had been pulled down it is demolished some weeks ago and a cinema theater ran up run up on the side on that place this taxi driver recommended me to another hotel some way off and uh, i went there i just sent a letter to council and then i went out to buy some soap as i had, had forgotten to pack any and i hate using hotel soap then i strolled and went for a walk about a bit had a drink at a bar and looked at the shops and when i came to turn my steps back to the hotel i suddenly realized that i didn't remember its name or even what street it was in he had forgotten there is a nice predicament for a fellow who hasn't any friends or co connections in in london i see the word predicament is a difficult unpleasant or embarrassing situation of course i can write to my people for the address but they won't have got my letter till tomorrow this story is very early, Saki died in 1916. You will think, why did he not do the phone? There were no mobile phones. Maybe phones were there, but mobile phone was not there. Of course, I can write. I am, I am without any money. Came out without a shilling. Shilling is 12 pounds makes a shilling. There is a pound in 100 pen, pennies. On me, which went in buying the soap and getting the drink. And here I am, wandering about with two pens in my pocket and nowhere to go for the night. This is the story of the gentleman. There was an eloquent pause after the story had been told. I suppose you think I have spun you rather an impossible yarn. Before that I also told you this sentence. Said the young man present, presently with a suggestion of resentment in his voice. Not at all impossible, said Godspeed judiciously. I remember doing exactly the same thing once in a foreign capital. Uh, and on that occasion, there were two of us, which made it more remarkable. Luckily, we remember that the hotel was a sort of canal. And when we struck the canal, we were able to find our way back to the hotel. Okay? So from here, the young, uh, the, the, the youth brightened at the same time. You go up to this page number 149. You can have his story up to this place. Uh, this uh, yaha par precaution is that it's his story and now i will give you some questions to do at your home please write down this will be your uh, you know sort of evaluation question number one write the story in brief first i read the story and then write the summary of the story in your own words in one or two pages okay one or two pages and then write about the setting of the story the setting setting of the story where is taking place which place which time who is the main character what sort of atmosphere is there this will be you can you can consult for that Paragraphs number one, two, and three. And then, uh, question is, it's an MCQ question. How do people feel when they are betrayed? Do they feel hurt or disloyal or disappointed? Okay. How do people generally uh, feel in a foreign country? Suppose you are in a foreign country, how will you feel? Angry, confused, less confident. And how should we judge people? This is a very important question. How should we judge people? Number one, by their behavior by their looks that is appearance or by their character okay wish you best of luck uh, enjoy yourselves 
I hope uh, you must have enjoyed the story. But I will advise you to read the story uh, silently also. Thank you very much. So nice of you. Goodbye.